Alright, so here we are going to set up ACI Simulator, the virtual machine on ESXi. My name is Raj Chaco, I'm a data center TSA. So once you have downloaded the OVF template or the OVF file, which is about 34 gigs on version 4.0, as you can see, pretty large file, um, you're able to import that into ESXi. Make sure you pick the host or the resource group that has enough horsepower. We are looking for 16 gigs of RAM and uh, about 80 gigs of hard drive and 8 vCPUs for this installation. So pretty significant uh, machine that we want because it is going to not only simulate your ACI management but also uh, two leaves and a spine under the same uh, VM. So once you have, uh, you know, imported it uh, there is this option of where you want to install it obviously uh, pick a storage uh, system that is fast and has enough um, capacity I'm doing my iSCSI here and uh, then you have the option of picking uh, the network so although you only see one network here uh, as an option uh, this is you gotta be your management interface but when you stand up the infrastructure you will see that there will be two Ethernet adapters so just wanted to give you a heads up so don't get confused when you see that so the VM will have two Ethernet adapters uh, but you will see that uh, th there you go I'm showing you two ports that shows up on the port group what you want to do is you want to make sure that the port group as well as the vSwitch is configured um, uh, with promiscuous mode so go to security and then uh, make sure that the promiscuous uh, mode is selected uh, or the option is enabled. You also want to enable, you know, the system could freely change MAC addresses as well as uh, it won't drop any forced packets. So here I'm doing the exact same thing on the uh, switch itself. Uh, so if you could click on vSwitch, and by the way, if you are antsy about doing this on a vSwitch, make another vSwitch um, and then enable permissionless mode. Right, so that makes it easy. Alright, so once you've done this, you can actually power on the system. The VM will power on. It will, the first time it will ask you for an activation key. So get your Cisco engineer to provide you the activation key once that is done. Uh, it goes through this uh, startup process where it's basic configuration. One key thing I'll point out is just hit enter. Um, and don't make any changes, especially the VLAN. Don't change that VLAN. VLAN 4 is what we need here. Um, so pick all the defaults except for the IP address for management. Pick an IP address in your port group that you selected in the management realm and, uh, and of course the default gateway. Everything else, leave it as is. The reason why you need VLAN 4 is because we use that as a mechanism to discover the other three um, devices which are the leaves and the spines. So and it, it does some, some you know, um, a ARP um, broadcast and ARP learning of a specific set of MAC, MAC addresses on that VLAN. You don't have to build that VLAN, you don't have to create an SVI for that VLAN on your network. As long as that you don't make a change here, it could be any VLAN sitting on the other end, no problem. So once you're accomplished this, of course, you know, it will um, consume all this configuration and uh, configure the fabric. Um, controller, the APIC controller itself, the virtual machine, and it will also uh, do something else. It will stand up one leaf for you. So once you get to this prompt, don't hurry and log in, because the first time you log in, it probably won't allow you to log in, because there is still some processes that are running behind the, the screen. Give it a few minutes. If you try to log in and it doesn't allow you to log back in, uh, come back in five minutes and then try it again. Um, admin is the username, and of course the password is something you set up earlier in that config. Um, screen there. I usually do, do a, uh, a sanity check. I'll do an ACI diag FNV read to make sure that I have a leaf discovered. In that case you saw TEP 101 was a leaf that was discovered. At this point you can point your browser to the um, the IP address of the virtual machine uh, that you have created and you are actually welcomed by the APIC controller uh, UI. Once you are in the UI um, there's nothing here except you know the control itself uh, and the discovered switch. So you had to add the switch to the fabric. The way you do that is go to fabric, inventory, and uh, um, you click on uh, 
uh, Fabric membership. But while you're here, you can actually take a look at all the other tiles that we make available in terms of health and statuses. Right now, as you can see, there are no leaves, no spines. Uh, so clearly, you have to add those here. So you click on Fabric membership and click on um, Nodes pending registration. You will see the first leaf that we, sh we saw on uh, when we did the FNB read command. Right click, register. You need to give two, two pieces of information, a node ID and a node name, that's it. Node ID has to be a three digit number, so 101 is what I pick. And of course you give it a node name, call it you know, leaf 101 or something. You don't have to mess with the, um, the remote leaf tab pool, leave that alone unless you know, that's something that we all do when you set up a remote leaf in a true AC environment. So once those two pieces of information are in, inserted, it takes about five minutes. By the way, I'm speeding up this entire process. It takes about five minutes before the uh, switch is discovered. As you can see on the right side, um, the switch um, shows up as active uh, and it will be just added to the pod. So when you click on pod, as you can see, it's on the right side, it says switch 101 or leaf 101. Uh, and you're seeing some errors and critical errors, etc. So at this point, what will happen is that um, it will discover a second switch which the leaf is attached to, which is the spine. And there you have the spine. So and it, it actually tells you what role it is. It says this role is spine. Click on it, give it a number, different number, 201 or 301, and then of course uh, a node name. Um, let's call it spine 201 or spine whatever. Once you do that, uh, same process, about five minutes, it registers itself to the uh, the fabric. And now when you go to the pod, uh, it just popped up as you can see. Um, and then of course, uh, the moment it does that, it will like, find the third leaf or the second leaf really, the third switch. And add that switch to, uh, call it you know, leaf uh, 202 or 102. Um, and your part is pretty much built at this point. Now this this process does take a few minutes, the registration and all that, right? Like I said, I've sped it up for you because I want to compress it into under 10 minutes. <coughs> so once you are here, uh, you can go into the pod view and topology and you will actually see what's available. Uh, and at this point, uh, now there's, there's a slight delay, like I said, that's because there is a discovery process that happens. Technically, it's an LLDP discovery between leaf to spine and spine to uh, the other leaf. Um, and those those red warnings that you saw on when I clicked on APIC, you can actually ignore those. Those warnings are for licenses and uh, um, and, and the fact that there's only one controller. Another thing I want to mention is that um, well, here it is. It's uh, it's active right now. The third leaf. One final thing I will mention is that uh, once you reboot this VM, it actually cleans up the config. So every time you reboot the VM, you actually come up with a clean config. So here's a fabric. This is the actual production fabric in this simulator environment. You know, one AP controller, two leaves, one spine. Um, and you, if you go to home and uh, tenancies, and you can do pretty much everything else here except actual packet walks, right? Um, so there you have it, folks. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Thanks.